Hello guys, welcome to the next session of developing e-commerce application from scratch using Angular and Spring Boot. In the last session, we discussed on how we can make the API changes so that we can get all the product details which are like um, added into the user's cart. So this is the API changes that we have implemented in the last session itself. So we have added some um, like we have added some code into a else part and we seen how it basically works. So in this session, what we are going to do is we are going to implement or integrate those API changes into the into our um, UI site. So as of now, what I have is let's suppose uh, currently I'm logged in with one user and whenever I'm clicking on the cart button, then we are able to get the we are able to get list of all the products which are added into the user's cart. So currently in my cart, I have added three different products. That is the reason I'm getting a list of three products over here. So now what we want is we want one button over here. Let's suppose um, checkout button. So whenever user will click on that button, then we will go to the billing section. So this is the main intention behind this particular uh, change that we are going to make. So to do these, let me just go back to the postman and let me just quickly show you uh, like what is the API changes that we have implemented and what it returns us exactly. So let me first of all trying to log, uh, let me just first of all log in with one user. So I have just logged in, let me just copy this JWT token. Let me just paste it inside the authorization. Let me just paste it inside the authorization header. And now let me just click on send button. Let's see what happens. So now we have received like three different products as a result. And this is the information that we basically use for our billing page. Now over here, two different parameters we have to focus on. So first parameter is like this is the uh, parameter like Boolean parameter. We have to pass true and false. So whenever we are like trying to buy a single product in that case we have to pass it as a true but if we are going to buy or check out the entire card then we have to pass it as a false this zero is nothing but a product id so whenever let's suppose we are going to buy a specific single product then in that case we have to pass the product id instead of this zero or else if we are trying to buy a entire cart then we have to like pass it as a zero so these are two different uh, and important parameters that we have to uh, use. Now let me just go back to the VS code and let me just try to do one thing. Let me just first of all try to add one button over here. So let me just go to the cart and let me just go to the cart.component.html. Let me just add, try to add one button. So let me just use, uh, let's suppose button let me just use it as a mat raised button let's see and let me just give the check a, uh, text as a checkout something like this and let's see let me just save these changes let's see what happens so now yes we are able to get this particular checkout button let me just give the color as a let's suppose primary color so let me just make it as a color is equals to primary something like this so yes it is primary color now let me just do one thing. Let me just give some margin from the bottom. So let me just apply one class that is called as a MB3, something like this. And now, yes, we are getting this checkout button over here. Let me just do one thing. Let me just try to make it as a align. And let me just make it as a right, something like this. And let me just remove this particular package. So yes, now we are getting this checkout button at the right side. So now what I want is whenever I will click on this checkout button, then I should be able to uh, go to the like next page where we will do the billings. And I just want to go to that next page. And I what I want is these particular three uh, products that are there in my card that should appear or populate on my billing page. So this is the functionality that I want. So what we want is we just want to first of all click on this checkout button and then we have to call, call the API that we have created in the last session itself. So first of all, let's do the, those things itself. So let me just go to the VS code again. Let me just add one click event. So let me just add click event and let me just make 
one function that is called as a checkout. Now this function is not yet created. So yes, it is giving us the error. So let me just create this particular function. Let me just make it as a checkout, something like this. Now let me just go to the services and maybe let me just go to the product services. So over here, uh, we have the API. So let me just find out the API that we have created previously. Yes. So this is the function that we have to call because if you just see the function name is get product details and then we have to pass the, these two parameters. So now let me just do one thing. Let me just first of all call this particular function. So this function is, is in inside the product service. So let me just go to the uh, cart component TS yes. product service is already added. Let me just do one thing. Let me just do this dot product service dot get product details. We have to pass two different parameters. First parameter is is single product checkout. So that will be a false because we are going to like uh, check out the entire card and then product ID should be the zero. And then we have to call it subscribe. Then we require two callbacks. First one is like a response success response. So if at all we get the response, then we have to make it as a like as of now, let me just use it as a console.log or else if at all we get any error, then in that case, let me just use console dot uh, console dot log. Let me just give the error something like this. And now let me save these changes. Let's see what happens on the console. And uh, let me just click on the inspect. Let me just open the console. And now let me just clear the console and let me click on checkout button. So as soon as I'm clicking on the checkout button, I'm just getting one response and I'm just getting three products um, which are added in my um, cart. So I'm getting the product ID one, five and seven. So if you just see like in my cart, we have product ID uh, like as of now, we are not showing ID on the table, but this is the product ID one, three uh, or one, five and seven, like whatever three products we have that products we are getting in the response. The next thing we want is we want to check out to the or we want to go to the billing section. So what I'll just do is I'll quickly show you how we can do this one. So for this, we, we require a router as well. And one more thing, we have done similar changes on our buy now uh, button. So if I just show you, if I just go to the, uh, let's suppose a view product details page. And if I just go to the uh, buy product function, so if you just see we have previously itself created um, uh, like we have previously itself uh, created this particular buy now buy, buy product uh, like function and we have previously used the router and we have uh, like used um, these parameters over uh, uh, like parameters as well so now what i will just do is i'll just go to the like let's suppose my billing component so in my buy okay so let me just go to the buy product component and then over here we have to fill some details and we have some billing uh, area as well alongside let me just go back to the ts file of it by product.component.ts file let's see what we are trying to do uh, over here so over here in my ng on in it we just want to send the product details something like this and then uh, it will automatically like populate uh, whatever the sections that are required like it will automatically populate some uh, billing sections for us so again one more thing that i just want to look is i just want to look into my app dot routing model ts file so over here if i just go to the buy now yes so if i just go to the buy now then we have created this by product resolver uh, resolver service as well so by product resolver service that we have previously uh, created so okay let's do one thing what we want is we just uh, we can just use that resolver itself so as of now let me just do one thing let me just comment out this particular section and let me just do one thing let me just go to the uh, let me just go to the show not a show product details uh, let me just go to the product view details and let me just go to the 
product view details component dot uh, ts file and let me just do one thing let me just use the same section like this dot router dot navigate we can just use by product slash by product like this is the path for the component and then we have to pass these two values so let me just copy the same thing and let me just do one thing let me just paste it in my in my checkout function and over here we are getting some issue this is because we haven't uh, injected the router service so let me just use private then router and let me just give it as a type of router something like this and now again uh, we like each single product checkout we want to make it as a false and for product id we want to pass it as a zero and now let me just save these changes and let's see what happens this time so over here what i'm going uh, getting is i'm just getting okay so there is no any error on the terminal as well and now let me just go back to the google chrome let me refresh it let me just try to click on checkout button let's see what happens so now as soon as we clicked on checkout button if you observe the url each single product checkout is equals to false and id is equals to zero so these are the values that we are passing from here and then behind the scenes it is calling the resolver that we just seen so we have created uh, this product re product resolver or something like this let me just show you yes so by product resolver service so behind the scenes it is calling the by product resolver service and then it is fetching the required data from the backend so if you just see get product details it is calling the get product details and it is passing some parameters and it is like uh, fetching all the required details from the backend and then whatever information that it uh, that it's uh, that it it is fetching then with the help of that information it is populating this particular data over here so we are getting the expected results and we have the uh, we have the drop down to change a quantity as well so let me just do one thing let me just try to change the quantity and what i am expecting is as soon as i change the quantity then i am expecting that this particular amount should be uh, like it should change and this particular total also should change let me just do one thing let me just make it as a 2 so yes like it is 1400 and amount is changed alongside let me just make it as a 3 so yes it like every single thing is changing and it is working perfectly fine let me just do one thing let me just try to put some test details over here so that we can just test that out whether my uh, order is getting placed or not and now let me just click on place order so now we are getting the message like your order is placed successfully and it will be delivered within the four to five business days let me just do one thing let me just go back to the database and we can just re-verify whether our order is placed in the database or not so let me just go to the order detail and let me just see yes so if you just see like the order id 88 89 and 90 then we are getting this particular uh, information so we have my full name is test my uh, full order uh, or my be like order address is equals to test order status is placed we have the quantity and we have the username as well and alongside we have the order amount as well so everything is working as expected and we are successfully able to check out our card uh, and uh, we are successfully place the order to entire card. So I hope you got an idea around this like how we can create this particular checkout button and in the next session we will see is like whenever we will place the order for the card then how we can you know remove these items from our card. So this is really very important part right because as uh, like um, in a moment ago i like placed the order my i i placed the order to my um, all the card but still we are able to see these particular details so this is not a correct way we just need to once order is placed for the card then we need to remove it so that things we will see in the upcoming sessions so i hope you got an idea around this like how we can create this checkout button and how we can place the order if you still have any questions let me know into a comment section and I will try my best to help you out in that case. And I hope you enjoyed this session. And I'll see you in the next session.